Hey guys, it's me, Mrs. Applegarth. Um, I just want to let you know I'm not some random floating voice. I am actually here in my classroom. And um, today we're going to go over um, lesson chapter one, lesson three, segments and their measures. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to write down the axiom postulate definition. And um, the thing I love about geometry, it takes things that we normally um, have been doing, but and it puts a definition with it. So a postulate or axiom is an accepted statement of fact, and you guys, of course, are going to write that down. Is an accepted statement of fact. So example. Um, I am a teacher at El Dorado High School. It is an accepted statement of fact. I really am a teacher here. Or that a right angle is 90 degrees. That's just, we're going to accept that that's the definition of a right angle. Okay. Um, if you need to pause this video at any time so you can finish writing things down, um, this session I'm going to highlight everything that. Um, uh, I want you to write down, so um, make sure you do that. And then let's go um, go ahead and off to the side, if you're watching this recording, write an S. Okay, let's do a congruent segment. Okay, you guys, so write this down. The next definition um, we're going to talk about is a congruent segment. So that goes in your notes. Um, it's really important you guys know what congruent segments are. Um, let me cover this up here so that it doesn't confuse you guys. Okay, so... Um, when something of numbers has the same value, so like 7, we say that they are equal. So we can say 9 minus 2 equals 7. You guys do not have to write this down. This is just information only. So when we're talking about numbers, numerical, we use the word equal sign. But now we're in geometry land and we're talking about line segments. So segments are a little bit different, and we're going to use the same um, statements not only to talk about line segments, but also to talk about shapes. So when you have an object that is the same length as another object, we call those congruent. It means the same thing as equal, but instead of talking about numbers, we're talking about like in this case, line segments. So instead of writing an equal sign because we're not talking numbers, we write a little equal sign with a squiggly tilde on the top of it. So let me show you with that. Let me give you an example. Um, if line segment AB or the distance between AB is equal to the distance between CD, then line segment, and you know we're talking about, so if we're talking about distances, you see we don't have that little line on the top. Um, then line segment AB is congruent to line segment CD. You can also say that if line segment AB is congruent to line segment CD, then the distances AB and CD are equal. Okay, let me... Um, Kind of clear the highlight. I'll show you what I want you guys to write down. Okay, so I want you guys to write down. I'll highlight it in yellow. I want you to write congruent segments. Um, and I want you to write if two segments have the same length, then the segments are congruent segments. Congruent is the geometry way of saying equal. Okay, if you need um, another moment to write that down, go ahead and pause this video and um, take that moment. 
uh, you guys wrote here an S. The next um, thing I want you guys to write is an O. And we're getting close to our secret phrase. Okay. Um, so let's talk about the ruler postulate. The points on a line can be matched one to one with real numbers. The real numbers that correspond to the point to a point is the coordinate of the point. The distance between points A and B, written as capital A, capital B, is the absolute value of the difference between the coordinates of A, B. Okay, so now we're getting we're getting really particular here. There's several things going on. So it's important you guys write down this whole phrase. So this is called postulate one, ruler postulate. The points on a line can be matched one-to-one -one with real numbers. The real number that corresponds to the point is a coordinate of the point. We've been doing coordinates. Normally we do like X, Y coordinates. We're just talking on a number line, so they're just going to have one number. The distance between points A and B, like boop, boop, so from here to here, is written as capital A, capital B, is the absolute value of the difference between the coordinates of A and B. So if we're putting together a little equation, it would look like, um, we take whatever number A is minus whatever number B is, and then make sure we take the absolute value, which means if this answer shows up negative, then um, we make it a positive. If it's already positive, we keep it positive. All right, let's... Add another dimension to that. You guys, I also want you to write this down. Um, please don't worry. If you are completely in the woods, we're going to do some examples that will bring this um, home for you. So um, no stress. All right. Postulate two. Segment addition postulate. I love this one because it makes total sense. If B is in between A and and C, like this picture here, then the distance from A to B plus the distance from B to C is equal to the entire distance from A to C. So if A, B, so let's go here, if B is between A and C, and AB plus BC is equal to, then um, if B is between A and C, then AB plus BC is equal to AC. If AB, let me show you what that is. So if AB plus BC is equal, so you can do it the backwards. So if you want to do this one first, if AB and BC is equal to the total AC, then you can say B is between A and C. All right, so I want you guys to write that down. And guess what? Some of you guys I'm a, um, are like me, and you need to see it to get a feel for it. So let's go ahead, and um, if you need to pause this video and write this finish writing it down, please do so. Do not move on um, if you are not ready. All right, we're going to do some examples so that you can see it's, I know the last couple bits were really wordy, but this isn't going to be wordy for y'all. Okay, use the figure below. This is our figure. It's a nice little number line. It's got four points at different locations on the number line. We're going to find the length of each segment. So for this guy, we're going to find the length between A and B. 
Now I'm going to show you guys how to do it by we you can look at it and count and then you'll know the answer but um, we're also going to do the mathy part so when we get to a place where we're not counting you can you know what math is going to back that up okay so from a to b if you just count little points on the number line this is one two three so the distance from a to b should be three so let me show you the math on it because we have said if you look here that the difference So the distance between points A and B is the absolute value of the difference between A and B. So we said A is negative 4, B is negative 1, and the difference between the two is negative 4 minus negative 1. I'm going to show you on my little buddy calculator here how to put that in your calculator. Because some of you guys are like, oh, Ms. Hoppegaard, I'm terrible with positive and negative numbers. So um, for this calculator, it wants the four to go in first and then click on the negative. Um, some calculators have you want you to type in the negative first. So just kind of figure that out for yourself um, on your calculator. This is the one that's in the computer. So um, all Chromebooks, you can um, open up Google and type in calculator and it'll give you um, a computer calculator. So. Okay, so we're going to go negative 4 minus negative 1 equals negative 3. And then we're going to take the absolute value of negative 3. Absolute value is a wonderful number. He takes negative numbers and makes them positive, and anything positive he keeps positive. So this is the absolute value of negative 3, which is 3. Okay, um, the next item we're going to find is the distance between B and C. So from here to here, and this is a number line we can count. So it's one, two, three, four, five. So we know the answer should be five, but we're going to do the math to make sure we back up our um, knowledge so that we can make sure when we get giant numbers where we can't count, we got the math to back it up. Um, okay, so negative 1, B, and C is 4. So in my calculator, I'm going to type negative 1 minus 4 equals negative 5. So we're going to find the absolute value of negative 5. Absolute value of negative 5 is equal to 5. So the distance between B and C is 5. I'm going to circle these so that okay and the last one is AC. Um, A is negative 4, C is positive 4, so we're going to write absolute value from negative 4 minus 4 and you get your calculator out negative 4 minus 4 is negative 8 and we're going to take the absolute value of negative 8. Again absolute value takes negative numbers and makes them positive, takes positive numbers and keeps them positive. Absolute values is the good vibes. He's the good vibes for of the math world. Good vibes. Oops, there's an E there. All right. And you guys, that is, um, let's go, our last secret letter is the S. So our secret phrase is SOS. Because if you need help, I am here to help you guys. I just want to make your lives better. And that's our secret phrase for this lesson. Okay, use the number line below for examples A through C to tell whether the segments are congruent. Remember, congruent looks like squiggly with an equals. 
it means that our line segments when um, their measures are equal. So we are going to tell, we're going to um, determine whether GH and HI are congruent. GH and HI. And we're just going to use the numbers to practice. I know we can count. So GH is going to be negative 10 minus negative 6. And HI is going to be negative 6 minus negative 2. So that's GH and that's HI. Because G is at negative 10, H is at negative 6, and I is at negative 2. All right, so GH, we use our calculator. And I, um, guys, I can do this in my head, but I want to use my calculator to make sure you're seeing how these numbers can come, just in case you're not that person that can do stuff um, in your head. So negative 10 minus negative 6 is negative 4. And because absolute value is the good vibes guy, he wants to take everything and make it positive, positive vibes only. Um, so GH is 4. I'm going to write 4 above GH so that um, we kind of keep track of them. So negative 6 minus negative 2. is negative 4. What? Also 4, and by the way, you could count and tell. So we are going to put a little congruent statement here. Yes. Yes. So excited. GH is congruent to HI. Okay, we're going to do this twice more. GH, guess what, guys? We've already done the math on GH, so I'm just going to write 4 right here because why double math it? And um, we're going to look at I, K. So I is negative 2, K is 2, negative 2 minus 2. Isn't that satisfying to have that, those numbers? Is negative 4. Absolute value of negative R, we know what that is. It is 4. So these guys, this, are congruent. You guys also, you need to be writing these example problems down. Um, so let me put, a, after we write the last one down, I'll put a big fat circle around everything. Um, don't forget when you watch this to submit the secret phrase. Um, I said it a couple of minutes ago. Okay, so we know IK is four. We did it right here. And we wanna know HJ. So H is negative six. And J is 0. Negative 6 minus 0. I don't even need a calculator because anything minus 0 is just itself. So HJ is 6. They are not congruent. Because 1 is 6 and 1 is 4. That is not congruent. They are not the same length. All right, you guys, that concludes our lesson for today. Make sure if you're watching this as a video, you submit to me via message. It could be remind, it could be email, um, it could be in Google Classroom, what the secret phrase is for this session. Thank you so much.